The story begins with Adam and Eve, who listened to the voice of the devil instead of God. They disobeyed, and mankind's perfect relationship with God was broken. They became the first to experience sin and the death sin causes. They tried to hide themselves with tree leaves to cover their shame. But God was not pleased with these coverings. He covered them instead with animal skin garments. Sin against God is a serious offense. It produces guilt, shame, and death and a break in relationship with him. Not the guilty person received the punishment, so God himself made the first animal sacrifice to cover their shame. God transferred the guilty person's punishment to the one that was innocent. This is where the tradition of sacrifice begins. Adam and Eve had two children, Cain and Abel. Cain made an offering to God from the food that he had grown while Abel offered an animal sacrifice, a blood sacrifice. God accepted Abel's sacrifice, but not Cain's. Why? Because sin demands death, separates us from God, and must be paid for with life. In Cain's jealousy, he killed Abel and led a large portion of humanity down a dark path. Hundreds of years later, Things had gotten so bad that God said there was no one on earth that deserved to live. No one except Noah and his family. God called Noah to build a boat, a big one. And in doing so, he preached this message. Judgment for sin is coming. And there is only one way to escape and receive the mercy of God. The ark. They laughed and ridiculed Noah until rain came from the sky and water burst up from the deep while the people were unprepared. The flood killed every person and animal and the world perished for their sins. Only Noah, his family, and the animals God had brought to the ark were saved. Then came Abraham, the father of faith. God told him to take his son and sacrifice him on a mountain. Abraham was disturbed by this command, but he obeyed God. He proved his faith with action, and he took his son to Mount Moriah. But just as Abraham was about to sacrifice his son, God stopped him and provided an animal to take his son's place. The animal redeemed, replaced, bought back his son. Blood for blood, life for life. 400 years passed, and God sent Moses to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, didn't like this, so God punished him with ten plagues. For the final plague, God sent an angel of death to kill the firstborn son of every household, unless the people were commanded to sacrifice a lamb and put its blood on the doorpost of the house. If the angel saw the blood, he knew the children inside had been redeemed by sacrifice. Both Jew and Egyptian, slave or freeman, if they obeyed the command of God, their child would be saved. If not, that night it happened. Just as Moses prophesied, and a great weeping went up all over Egypt in any household that had refused God's mercy by sacrifice. Later, Moses gave the people the Torah, in which God prescribes a ritual for covering the sins of the people. The offender brought an animal sacrifice to the priest. He laid his hands on the head, symbolizing his own sin and shame had been transferred to the animal. Then, the animal was sacrificed, its blood spilt. His sin was covered. King David and the prophets followed the Torah given by Moses, but they wondered, can the blood of animal really cover the sins of a man? Or are they signs and symbols pointing to the future? David prophesied of a coming one, a king, a messiah. The descendant of a king 
who would rule and reign in power, yet be a humble man with a heart of compassion. This Messiah would be sinless, perfect, blameless, innocent. He would suffer and die and be a worthy sacrifice. He would become the great sacrifice. Jesus was born in a barn because nobody had room for him. Born a virgin, born pure, a royal but poor descendant of King David. Poor country shepherds and wealthy wise men from the east came to honor the child and testify that he was indeed the coming one, the Messiah whom the scriptures had promised. Jesus preached love, truth, peace, humility. He was a humble carpenter, but brilliant philosopher. He offended religious hypocrites who cared more about rituals than loving God. But he was loved by the poor, the humble, the repentant, the sinner. He healed the deaf, blind, deformed, and demon-possessed. He even raised dead men back to life. A homeless man, a wandering teacher, a revolutionary, calling lovers of God to live full lives. Jesus even called God his Father and showed mankind that the all-powerful loves you like a daddy. God wanted to relate to humans as his children, but there was a problem. They were still sinful and God was holy. Man's sin, starting with Adam, had separated the people from their God. And the Messiah knew what he had to do to bring them back. Prophet John the Baptist prophesied of Jesus saying, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus was the Messiah, the chosen one, chosen to become the great sacrifice. Having never sinned, he was holy, pure, perfect, and worthy to pay the price for sin. The innocent one in exchange for the guilty, the holy one in exchange for sinful people. He did this for his father to pay the price for mankind's sin, to free them from their slavery to sin, and to restore to them what Adam had lost, a perfect relationship with God. Jesus died on the cross not because of the Jews nor the Romans, but by the hand of God, his Father. God sacrificed Jesus to fulfill what was written by the prophets, that he would become the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, yours and mine. But he didn't stop there. Three days later, God raised Jesus, the Messiah, from the dead as a promise to those who would believe in him, they too shall rise again to eternal life. After this, Jesus promised his disciples that he would return again, but this time as judge and king. The Messiah is God's gift to mankind, that they would not die in their sins and be separated from God. But by receiving Jesus' sacrifice, they could be restored back into a perfect relationship with him. But like any gift, it's not yours until you take it. When God performed his sacrifice, he had the name of every person on his list, past, present, and future. Your name was on this list too. Why did Jesus have to die? Isn't the all-powerful God able to forgive sins as he pleases? Yes, he can, but God is holy and just. His holiness separates us from him, and justice always requires a price to be paid. He needed a perfect sinless sacrifice to wash away your sins and make you clean again. Just as the great sacrifice provides forgiveness for the guilty, the gospel provides restoration and victory for the defiled, ashamed, and defeated soul. If you pray this prayer, from your heart and begin to follow the commandments of Jesus, you no longer need to fear the day of judgment. But you will know for sure that you have a place in paradise. Your eternal destiny will no longer be decided by what you can do for God, but what He has done for you. You can pray this right now. Oh God, I confess to you that I am a sinner and that I deserve to be forever separated from you when I die. I thank you for demonstrating your love and mercy through your sacrifice. I thank Jesus for taking my sin and shame upon himself, along with my punishment. I believe that it is through Jesus that I am able to be forgiven of my sins 
and come to live with you in heaven when I die.